Okay. Um, you can line up for questions. Right pillow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, this project was born uh, was born out of um, initiative called Comidas Que Curan that I created uh, along with uh, other friends, uh, which is basically a food heritage preservation project. Uh, we we interview older people to learn about food traditions and other lifestyle. Uh, behaviors that uh, impact health and and we we create films so we, we 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 seek to document that in many different ways one of them is making films and we also teach workshops uh, to especially younger kids or uh, younger children uh, and uh, adolescents in in ecuador uh, and we give them, we teach them how to do the research and how to make the films so that the, that this process uh, goes on because a lot of these knowledge and wisdom is being lost because of you know all the messages that come from the industry and the medical doctors and this is the reason why i made this film and why we do the work we do so um i invite you to uh, visit our website it's a brand new um, english uh, language website and uh, there's a donate button there we are independent filmmakers we we don't have any institutional support um, but we, you can also support us by um, buying a DVD or, or, you know, sharing the film with, with your friends and family. I have a couple of DVDs out here if you want to get a copy. This film was not recorded um, a, in, as part of this conference, so I encourage you to share it with other people. And um, if you want to organize a screening uh, for your community or institution, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you. And um, I'll be uh, glad to answer questions. I, I'm, we are passing out a, like a paper uh, forms where you can uh, drop us a few lines with your feedback. So we, we, that's another way to support us. Thank you. Yes. So the the biggest, yeah, uh, the biggest uh, coconut producing regions historically have been uh, in Asia, Southeast Asia. So they probably come from uh, well, usually the 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 coconut water uh, is made with Thai uh, coconuts that are a different kind of coconut. They're young coconuts, but the Philippines is historically the the biggest producer. Uh, of coconuts. Uh, and in this side of the world, uh, Western Hemisphere, Mexico became the, the, the biggest um, <coughs> exporter of, of coconuts. So they could come from many different, uh, many different countries, but yeah. Um, and ever since the coconut boom in like the, the 2000s, uh, these, you know, the, the plantations kind of like came back again because the, the whole uh, belief about saturated fat being bad, it hurt everybody around the, 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 the globe that was uh, you know, producing coconuts um, and you know, using it, them as part of their traditional diet. But as of recent, it's, uh, it's become popular in the US and in Europe, so it's starting to come back, so. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Thanks. I love I, the film. I would love to see it distributed educationally throughout the states, if that ever happens. I, I hope so. Yeah. Um, I, I did watch your presentation. I think you presented a few years ago. Yes. Uh -huh. And you mentioned that you know the coconut industry is being exported, uh, but somebody's coming into Ecuador as maybe a white person or a non-native person and trying to reintroduce. Yeah. And can you talk about that a little? Yeah, I found sure. that fascinating and horrifying at the same yeah. time. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you for watching that and and bringing that up. Uh, so first, we have screened this film in, in across the the U.S. and in other countries too. Um, in, in universities, that's where we've received the most interest from. So yeah, if if you know of any universities that are interested, just um, give give them a recommendation, and we'll be happy to get in touch with them. Um, yes, that. Um, 
That was an example from the Smithsonian Magazine, and the article is sti still up, and it was a, an American entrepreneur they featured in, in their magazine that claimed to be introducing a healthy oil in, um, you know, in Ecuador uh, to a community that is plagued with vegetable oil, uh, with bad habits, uh, bad habits of eating vegetable oils, refined vegetable oils. So this is very contradictory because he was, you know, he set up his company in the coast of Ecuador, um, in one of the regions that is, you know, has been, you know, the coconuts grow naturally there. They've been growing naturally there for, <laughs> for ages. And um, the reason why we have vegetable oils is because of American Heart Association recommendations being exported to, you know, the rest of the world, including Ecuador. So um, it was very, yeah, it was very ironic that an American claims to save Ecuadorians from bad habits of vegetable oils when that idea came from the U.S. Um, so that, that was the point that I was trying to make in my, in my talk, yeah. But ever since I started this research in around the year, yeah, 2013, I've seen how um, ideas about coconut oil being healthy have been introduced from the U.S to Ecuador with uh, marketing uh, strategies and labels like cold pressed, um, which is tragic because uh, as you, many of you know, it really doesn't matter if coconut oil is cold pressed. I mean, it doesn't make a difference because it's almost 100% saturated fat and it doesn't hurt uh, to, you know, to cook it. And that's the way that it's done traditionally. So, in many ways, like, you know, this um, hegemony, this kind of like hegemonic influence of a uh, cultural influence of the U.S., it, it, it just, um, it, it, it just uh, hard to avoid, uh, you know, the, the damage because people take what, whatever comes from abroad, uh, from the U.S., either through social media or whether they just take it for granted. So that's, that's why I made this film, uh, showcasing local people as authorities of food and medicine, so that um, we try to change that, break with that. So. Question over here? Mm -hmm. So the factory couldn't operate because it couldn't get a, a, a sanitary certification? Yeah, yes. Um, what was preventing that from happening? Just bureaucracy. Is just very, um, it's a very bureaucratic process. Mm -hmm. And the communities generally, so what, what happens in, this is a community in the coast of Ecuador that is very, very rich in natural, all kinds of natural resources, not just coconuts, but oil and uh, fish and, and, you know, minerals like uh, uh, gold and other uh, kinds of, you know, lumber. So a lot of companies, uh, as of the past like uh, 30 or 40 years have come in to exploit mm. a lot of these resources and there are a lot there's a lot of funding from international organizations for development projects and like social development projects so usually what happens is they come in with a bunch like a lot of money to you know to implement these projects and they leave and the project never gets a follow up they don't they don't ha they don't train the people mm -hmm. to actually carry on with the project to make it so sustainable. So there are, uh, they call them like white elephants um, that, yeah. you know, that exist, uh, that, that were funded by, you know, foreign uh, organizations like it Italian or American or... And um, NGOs. Uh -huh, NGOs. Yeah. And they don't, they don't get the proper, you know, funding to, or, or, or the proper training and follow-up so that they can continue... Uh, into the future. So is the factory still not operational? It um, it started back as as of like three years ago. I heard that they they actually you know uh, jump started it again. So it's operating now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, I think. Are you going to stay up with Diana, Diana and James? So might as well do I that can now. Stay, but yeah. It's, thank you. Thank you for your attention.